The theory of integrable systems, modern theory of integrable systems, now, now will celebrate a 50 years uh, anniversary. In, it will be in, uh, in the next week in, it, in uh, Italy. Uh, but um, a huge area of research, but uh, still some important problems are not solved. And I like to concentrate on three unsolved problems. First problem is everybody knows the Kartevek de Vries equation. And everybody knows how to solve the Kartevek de Vries equation if initial data decays in infinity. But nobody knows how to solve the Kartevek de Vries equation if initial data are just bounded, not decaying. At infinity, the same problem is unsolved from nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And for nonlinear Schrodinger equation, this is a problem of big practical importance because the nonlinear Schrodinger equation describes propagation of pulses in optical fiber lights. And nonlinearity is essential in, in this process, and nonlinearity is actually a limit for capacity of this. Uh, of these uh, lines, and uh, if we will manage to solve that, to use the exact method for uh, for really describing how the signal transforms in during during the propagation, it will be very helpful. As a second problem is, it's time for statistical description of integrable systems. Uh, it's a system, systems are, in many cases, they really, uh, um, they, uh, the real situation is described by a system with, when the number of degrees of freedom is very large. For instance, what's going on in the coastal line in, in the ocean, it's, it's described by integrable equation kind uh, of the equation. However, statistical description of this phenomenon is not, it's far from um, b b being uh, developed. And so I call this uh, statistical description of integrable system. I call this integrable turbulence. And again, the first object for for integrable turbulence to study statistical behavior of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And so far, it can be done only by the use of numer massive numerical experiments. And re recent numerical experiments show, showed a very strange result, an unexpected result, and I will <coughs> speak about them. And the last question is discovery of new integrable systems. Uh, all so far known integrable systems are belong to two classes. First, a system who has lax representations, lax pairs, or uh, the system which are WKB limit of this uh, system. For instance, uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, has lax representation, but double L can be limited. It's just a question of gaze dynamics, which also integrable by the use of uh, hydrograph method, but it's a degenerated uh, uh, version of inverse scattering. However, could uh, uh, do exist as systems, integrable system of completely different nature? It's so far open question, and I have as a uh, hypothesis that uh, equation of describing of dynamic of free surface fl fluid in, in gravity field on the deep water is integrable systems, but uh, this fact is <laughs> we have so, so many arguments in support, but so far it's not proven. And let me just uh, first part 
So, so my talk is separated in three parts. Three parts, first by Dan with my son Dmitry and Sergei Dyachenko. Uh, it's about bounded non-vanishing solutions. So far we constructed, this is Kartevec de Vries equation, and uh, uh, it can be solved by the use of auxiliary non-vanishing uh, operator. It's a lux operator. And what's going on if u tends to zero, it, it was infinity, this situation is classical subject for classical inverse scattering. I think I may, I can uh, me saw this, it's known for everybody. And the method for solution is going, you, you started from initial wave data, you, you're going to scattering data, then your scattering data are extended by time, in time by simple formula, then you solve inverse scattering problem. Uh, but uh, there is a classical method, there is other, exist another. And, and uh, in particular, if your spectrum is pure discrete, uh, your uh, solution, uh, your, your potential is so-called Bargman potential, which is, uh, which is known since 1946, uh, uh, I guess. <coughs> and this is the ref reflectionless potential. Uh, and, uh, and the problem is, could, and, no, and there are other, so, so uh, um, the, the second approach is following. Instead of uh, solving the initial value problem, one just can find a, 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 a broad class of exact solutions and then describing by some uh, uh, explicit formula and then try to, to solve your initial value problem by choosing, uh, by fitting to this solution. It can be compared with two classical methods and, and then one class of this solution is uh, given by the use of algebraic geometry method by the, uh, by the uh, Jacobians uh, expressed in terms of theta function on uh, Jacobians of hyperelliptic uh, um, uh, curves. All these solutions are quasi-periodic. Uh, and uh, I must say that this solution, so far, is, 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 is certainly this solution, the scope of this solution is not enough to, to solve the initial value problem, this uh, initially bound, bounded initial value problem, because a priori all these solutions are quasi-periodic. Initial data could be non-periodic at all. Uh, well, uh, uh, um, the idea, the probably approach could uh, might be following. Suppose we, you start is uh, fast decaying case, and you study the set of uh, Bargman potential with a zero, with a zero uh, reflection coefficient, and then you try, then you try to uh, to increase the number of of, 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 solid, of solitons or eigenvalues to infinity, turn it into infinity and to make, to feel everything and, and to, 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 uh, to fit all your uh, solution, what you want. Uh, that actually the theorem that the set of um, Bergman potential is dense in, in, in the space of bounded potential, was proven by Lundin, Lundin and Marchenko many years ago. How, however, this procedure are not, is not efficient. What we really did, uh, we derived an official procedure. So I just say here that this method which we use, a priori construction of solution, it's, good, it's similar to 
the D'Alembert method for using in, in, in the wave equation. Yeah? You can use uh, two, two way, um, uh, approach uh, for solution of wave equation. First, using the Fourier transform, it's, it's a, it, an analog to inverse scattering problem. And second, you have an explicit formula like D'Alembert formula and, and try to find an, uh, a free function which are in this formula. To, to, satis to satisfy your initial data. So our method is a dressing method. It's analog of D'Alembert approach. And uh, uh, the main point is following. We study so-called D-bar problem on non-local D-bar problem. I think this is a D-bar problem. Uh, with k, k is quite analytic function, it's a k bar, t is some dressing function at k minus k. And the statement is this, and if it's normalized by condition kappa tends to one and infinity, so it's automatically satisfied with this equation, and bar more potential appears if the function is, anal is analytic with simple poles. And what important uh, novelty? We assume it is known that these uh, uh, poles are all imaginary, but traditionally assumed that all they are concentrated in only an upper half plate. But indeed, to make an efficient closure, you must, you must divide your potential, your, your poles, and roughly speaking, half poles should be put in low half plane and another uh, in upper half plane. In this case, it, it, the, efficient, the closure is, becomes efficient, efficient procedure, and it, it leads to, uh, it leads to, well, this is a procedure you, you, can, you can make a procedure of receding of poles from upper to low half plane. It will be without changing of potential. And after this procedure, you end up your poles, uh, rational function become a function with two cards, one in upper and the low in, uh, in, in upper half, half axis and symmetric par, uh, card in the low um, half axis. And uh, the, the jump on this card satisfies to, to satisfy to Riemann Hilbert problem of certain type, which can be derived to integral equation, which are, can be efficiently solved by computer. And what's the result? Is it's a generation of a periodic fu uh, function, just in terms of uh, which is. Uh, uh, actually, Weierstrass uh, elliptic function, and then if you start from here, then you can put all those this as an initial data to cartovic de Vries equation, and you get a potential, much broad class of potential, which we call this primitive potential, where they are bounded, and then neither periodic nor quasi-periodic. And uh, the hypothesis say they cover all possible bound but, uh, in, uh, potential, still not proven. Now please show movie. What's going on if you start this function as initial data in this river? river. Oh, this is a formation of the dispersion shock wave. It's a solution of cardiac de Vries equation. The next se second one, please. This is, you start from a regular solution, it becomes irregular. What's interesting is that you can construct random Initial, pot initial potential, which are, could be a random solution of the cartier de Vries equation. Then we go to the second part of my talk. So this is explicit solution of the Weierstrass function. 
Huh? No. Huh? It's a solution. It's a solution of uh, Riemann Hilbert problem. Performing numerical. Start at just. This part is done in collaboration with Andrei Gilash and Dmitry Agafonsov. And mostly, this is a numerical solution of uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation with periodic boundary condition and different choice of initial data. Uh, first is its focusing equation. First is condensate, which is unstable condensate, of course, with small uh, initial noise. Second is conoidal wave with initial noise. And third, well, it was a solitoning gas uh, at a combination of more than 100 solitones, which equal amplitudes and different velocities. Uh, in the linear theory, what is uh, the main question we address is what's the distribution of amplitude? What's a PDF? What, what's the probability function for, for, for amplitude of, uh, 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 of psi? In the linear theory, it would be the relay function. With some, with some dispersion. What's really astonished us, then if you wait for a long time in all the experiment, we also observe formation of relay distribution with, in, with a different dispersion depending on initial data. And I show you just so far no explanation to, 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 to this fact. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, the, and, and now you see that what's going on with energy, this is potential kinetic energy in, in initial moment of time. They oscillate. And at this, in this period of time, uh, PDF are very far from relay. But finally, in the long, after a long time, they, they tend to some constant limits. And uh, you see what's going with, uh, I, I miss this, what's going with PDF function. The, uh, after a long time, it becomes a red. Thick red. Uh, similarly, if you start with conoidal wave, it is expressed in an elliptic function with perturbation again. A similar red, it's a, it's a, an energy, um, kinetic energy, it's a function of time. I mean this. And again, if you wait a long, a long time, you see, again, you see the relay distribution. And the last experiment is uh, what was done by the use of the inverse scattering method. It was studied, this multi-solitonic solution included 128 solitons. Uh, it's solitonic gas with with, uh, 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 with uh, random phases, and so this is position of poles of uh, on on a complex plane. So real part is the same, imaginary part is different. So all solitons are all the same amplitude, but they have a little bit different velocities. And again, <coughs> this is a spectrum. And again, if you wait for a long time, you get relay distribution. 
I think it's kind of general theorem, but we so far not explain it. And third part, please. Okay, how much time I have? I have enough, yeah? I have 20 minutes. All right. So it's Alexei, uh, Alexander Dyachenko is the father of Sergei Dyachenko. So in a sense, it's family business. Uh, <laughs> family business, but I work with my son and Dyachenko works in, in different places. Dyachenko in, in Chernogolovka, my son Dmitry in Michigan, and uh, Sergei in, in Illinois, and Alexander is Landau Institute. All right, so it was already formulated, the problem. Uh, it's a free surface hydrodynamic, which is in deep water in presence of gravity. Uh, the flow is potential, potential of incompressible, so psi is the solution of the Laplace equation. Uh, phi capital Psi is phi evaluated to the surface. It is the shape of surface. These two quantities are con complex, uh, canonically conjugated. And uh, Hamiltonian could be expanded in power of nonlinearity. Nonlinearity is a steepness. So for, for shallow uh, waves, one can take first, actually not a problem to, to calculate all. It's a so-called uh, Adamar, Adamar expansion variation formula. They, you, I can, you can calculate Hamiltonian in any order. Uh, but what is, then one can introduce normal variables which are classical uh, analog of creation and annihilation operators. And Hamiltonian will be in terms of this, uh, take this form. Now what's, if, if you study three wave interaction, this person relation is root square on JK. This person relation is omega and k. It's like this, right? As a result, three wave interaction are forbidden. And one can make a canonical transformation, excluding cubic terms. After this transformation, you get the Hamiltonian equation like this very similar to what used in solid state physics. And T is a coefficient. In one what miracle number one, if you study the four wave resonant curve, in one dimensional case, so such as three vectors are directed in one direction, they can ge generate a vector, a wave going in opposite direction. However, the amplitude of this process is identically zero. You have a long expression and then all terms are cancelled. Uh, the next question was going on if you make a further expansion, uh, you get Five wave interaction, five wave interaction in one dimensional case, they have nine different channels, co possible combination of, of signs. For, in two of them, coefficient is zero, in seven, it's not zero. So it's not integrability in, in the primitive sense. It, it would, in, 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 because in this case, all amplitude scattering should resonance process should be zero, but it might be integrability when the constant motion are linear function on time. This is not forbidden. Then 
Anyway, the fact that uh, uh, there is so constellation in, in, in one in one dimensional Hamiltonian, it make one more step in for in for me in making of uh, in Poincaré a series and make one more canonical transformation, which really exclude these processes, four wave processes, which have a zero amplitude. And this leads to extremely simple equation. It's a difficult to imagine that is a consequence of Euler equation, but it's really a consequence of Euler equation, approximate. It's called supercompact equation, which is very, very convenient for numerical study. And this equation has a solitonic solution, a soliton or brother propagating without changing of its form. But the fact that this is, in, this is a more or less simple fact, because in this equation, Already, all wave propagate only in one direction, right? And th there is no backward process. We use this. But what's interesting, the same property holds for exact equation. The next, the next step is to make a uh, conformal mapping to a low half plane. Uh, an equation. Now we, we have two functions, two analytic functions, z and phi. Both are analytic in upper half plane. A psi, uh, psi is uh, complex potential. They satisfy the following equations. Oh. They satisfy the following system of equation. Is this system integrable or not? Okay, one interesting fact. This system has a simple solution. Which is the following solution? Uh, it's a compressed fluid. The fluid is compressed, so velocity is linear function. On, on coordinate and inverse proportional function of time, it, it's a blow up at t minus t naught. Of course, it's not very uh, physical, physically reasonable initial data. However, if you impose this initial, initial data, you immediately get into complete integrability. And you can construct a lot of exact solutions. Indeed, your equations are now, so, so you have, suppose you take your function as, as uh, this solution is trivial, yeah, this is a trivial solution of previous system of equation. If you now denote z as an additional term and phi is an additional term to this, for these additional terms you have system of equation. An equation are satisfied if oh, if this function <coughs> is just arbitrary function of coordinate, then phi is following. It's a miracle that if you consider that this function does not depend on time. This both equations will be satisfied at arbitrary function alpha. It makes possible to construct an infinite family of exact solutions. For instance, like this, given in a parametric form. And this solution is either formation of bubbles or droplets or bubbles in finite time. Exact, expressed exact formula, but one bad thing that it, Initial data, uh, <coughs> boundary conditions are not good. Uh, and second miracle, it's a formation of a bubble, a formation of droplets. And second miracle is calling. Suppose you look for general solution is 
as, an, as a series in inverse in, in the power of one by t. Again, the first term, the first term can be chosen arbitrarily, and for this function, these two functions, R could be chosen, they are connected with the relation. Then all other terms are easily calculated step by step by recurrence procedure. So in a sense, uh, the system of equation, of a, of a deep water equation with this exotic boundary condition is completely integrable. However, of course, it's not, we cannot consider this as a proof that it, the system is integrable under the natural boundary condition. And uh, a question about integrability is, is following. Uh, in fact, there is a following observation. Suppose I will look, so I, 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 I return back to the system of equation which I discuss. It can be resolved with respect to time derivative is, is not a big deal. The question is, do this, has this system additional, what's a typical, typical uh, property of integrable systems? The integrable systems, they have extra constant of motion. Uh, the question is, do this system has the system extra, of course it has trivial constant of motion, mass, momentum, energy, but has this system extra mo motion constant? Answer is absolutely astonishing. It could have an extra motion constant, but the number of this motion constant depends on the initial data. And in fact, if, you're, if you will look your solution in the following form, for zero derivative, so, so it, it's just a rational function plus some addition and for few also potential velocities also, then, this q are motion constant, and this k and our linear function on time in presence of gravity. Uh, and the question is why the number of this, if the number of this, so if the, if the number of this, uh, do the number of this uh, motion constant, enough for integrability. That's an open question. However, this fact can be reformulated by the following way. Suppose, well, of course, of course, actually, this Q is just a residue, right? This is a pole, a pole is persistent, and Q is just a residue, and K and also residue. Residue, residue, what's residue? Residue is a result of integration over, over a circle. So if we go to this system of equation, and if we take any separated circles, look, uh, closed circles, all integrals, of these of first of circles uh, of first function z, or z will be motion constant, and integral, this integral will be linear function on time. The derivative is proportional. Now, now about what uh, what's going on if if you in the moment have no such so called. It's not ho hopeless situation because your solution, there is a theorem that your solution never could be rational function. It always has uh, branch points, so the solution is uh, continued to some unknown Riemann surface. Apparently, of infinite genus, 
but it's not proven. But so far, any any attempts to to construct a Riemann surface with a finite number of, of sheets are failed. But in, but how many circles could be on the Riemann surface? We don't know. It depends on its topology. It it could be infinitely many. Uh, in in this, in this sense, if it's integrable system with its integrable system of of some new type, but uh, I just show you some arguments in support of integrability. Uh, I say that because of this of this type of dispersion. If you look at process, of any, of certain amount, positive certain amount, negative, the same with K. Such processes should, must generate, if you have wave, system of wave going in one direction, they should generate waves going in backward direction. In the simplest model, super compact equation, all these processes are suppressed. As a result, we have a giant brazer, which is probably a good model for freak waves. This one. This is a solution of super compact equation, approximate equation. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this is a solution of exact equation after, after conformal mapping. You see propagation of Brazor. Again, so nonlinear Schrodinger equation is, is not applicable because there is no, you cannot say about uh, envelope, envelopes. Anyway, it propagates for thousand its period without geni backward generation. And next slide, please. Uh, okay, now it's omega k, the spectrum, space-time spectrum. You see that it's uh, linear. It's a line corresponding to leading harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, but there is no way of propagating in backward direction. So it's a, it's, it's a very strong for restriction for generation of wave going in backward direction. It must be very natural consequence of integrability. Well, and uh, now just to make a fun, of course, of course, the, the presence of uh, conservation of uh, of um, uh, residues is a strict mathematical fact. Um, however, we decided anyway to check it numerically just to be sure that that is really true. So now, last last movies. Well, we created initial data in the form of drop, and initial data now, if we have only two, only two poles in, in, both in, 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 Z, in ZU and in, in potential and in, uh, function Z, it's a sum of two logarithms, both, both are. We expected that the, the drop will separate very soon. However, it creates a, a something like this, a long, long, long stem, strut, which is supported. And we could not wait, then the, 
competition failed after a long time. But okay, I think the next movie. What's going on with poles? In the initial moment, we have two poles. Then you see formation of other poles. Parasitic poles, I say, actually, they're not poles. Actually, this is by the approximation. This is actually cuts. And immediately, the surface become, uh, the complex thing became a Riemann surface. We absolutely have no idea how many sheets and what's, what's the, uh, Circles say there, you see that they try to, to reach, to go closer and closer to this. Probably these poles already are on, on, on the other sheets of Riemann surface. We, we, we don't know, they could be move, move there. And then the, the last movie. Well, it's a behavior down in the presence of gravity. This is behavior of residue in presence of gravity. So the theory predicts that residue are linear function on, on time. That's really what happens. Uh, so far, let me summarize. Deep surface hydrodynamic is an integrable, very easy integrable if your initial, if your boundary condition are exotic, compressed fluid. In the case of normal physically boundary condition, there are many indirect evidence of integrability, presence of extra motion of constant, uh, eternal persistence of a strong solid on not radiating backward energy in backward direction and uh, uh, cancellation of certain <coughs> term in, 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 in scattering matrix, classical scattering matrix. So still problem is enigmatic. I think, I think Probably some new idea will appear. Probably the first idea now it's a, in, in some cases we have a numerical experiment such that we have only one cut. Probably it makes sense to, to perform the Zhukovsky transform and to go to a set of Zhukovsky transform and try to, to construct restore the total Riemann surface, global Riemann surface. It, it's, it's, a, it's a laborious procedure, of course, cumbersome, but we will do this in future. Thank you very much. Let me ask a question. Uh, so this uh, about second part of your talk about uh, this PDF for multiple solitons. So it was, uh, you work in the 70s and then recently in the 2000s uh, about kinetic equations for solitons, right? And it was recent work of L and Kennedy L and collaborators, which, you know, I think we claim that they kind of do it with kinetic equation, um, more better adjusted for high density of solitons. So this is, of course, not PDF, but still can it be any help for, uh, because you mentioned that we, we need to find some analytical form of PDF, right, for this soliton turbulence 
Do you think still this kinetic equation can help in that direction? It's, it's not an analytic form, it's just a numeric. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, you, you just approximate, we just, we, we, what's going on? You, suppose, suppose you start, suppose you, you have a con unstable condensate and you put some noise. Uh, okay, it's an unstable situation, uh, focusing equation. Uh, immediately, the turbulence start to develop, right? Uh, and the chaotic behavior. And for first, um, there is characteristic time in the growth rate of, of uh, instability connected with the amplitude of condensate. If you wait for several uh, this characteristic time, you will see that your PD, uh, PDF is very far from uh, from uh, relay. There you have formation of fat, fat tails, then vanishing of fat tails. There's some big oscillations. There are certain moment of time. There are certain moment of time where production of rogue waves is really probable. But if you wait for a long time, after a long time, everything, everything becomes calm, and after a long time, you get completely relayed distribution. There is some, but what is the dispersion? It's unclear from the beginning. It, 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 it's, it's some number, depending somehow on, uh, on the amplitude of, uh, of content saying. It, it should be checked, but... Uh, and the same, this, this, this similar picture in, uh, in other experiments. Uh, I must say that in third experiment, I didn't participate as a coaster. Uh, it's uh, Gilash and Agafonsov did. And at the moment, we, we, we plan a new series of experiments, but it's too early to discuss it. Mm -hmm. So this, this question is uh, perhaps somewhat loosely related to the first part of your talk. So, um, uh, so for linear Schrodinger equations with, uh, with random potentials, you have Anderson localization. Okay. Uh, do you have a view on the effect of nonlinearity on this? Uh, does it persist, does the phenomenon you, you persist? You have Anderson localization or you have no Anderson localization. In fact, this is illusion that you always have an, and, and the answer is following. Uh, uh, I tell you that it's a kind of, it's a kind of pure, it's a kind of uh, common opinion. So you have it, L operator is minus T do by dx squared plus u. And you study, U is less than M, bounded, X minus plus infinity. You study, you call this E belongs to the spectrum. If this equation has one or two solution, such that psi is also constant, uh, bounded. So it's clear that E belongs, this, they form a set, which is a positive, all imaginary E is zero. And this set is, is E, it's bounded from, from below with a certain number. Now, what's the, prop, what's the property of this set? Answer, any measurable f set could be, could be uh, it's, 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 a, it's not proven, but if, if, you, if you take any, any set, measurable by, by Lebeg, you can find a potential which realizes this, this, this set. Uh, some of them, it could be, it could be, if you speak about 
if you speak about Anderson localization, in this case, your set is, is countable. But by the way, it could be countable or non-countable. In the case of under localization, the set is countable. And all, all set is uh, uh, not degenerated, one fold. Uh, what we do, we, we can construct a potential which we, we, we start from the beginning, from the conjecture about the set. So suppose our set consists of, of cuts. Consist of cuts. Then we can construct the set at any given uh, distribution configuration of this of these cuts. And in some cuts, the spectrum will be one, one folded and another two folded. So, and now the question is if for expert in uh, function of theory <laughs> of, of a real analysis, just to prove that this set could be, that any, any measurable Lebesgue uh, set can be, can be presented as a limit of such set. It's, it's a very prob good problem for pure mathematician. Uh, sometimes, in, in other words, you, you can construct, what, what's astonishing, you can construct a random potential which has, uh, which not only have localization, they, they have ballistic propagation of particles through them. A random ideal conductors. Uh, because the word of random, it's, it's very, he had a very broad uh, and, uh, uh, interpretation. So the, if, if, of course, if you, will, if you will construct your potential as a set of pot potential wells which are posed in a random way, you will get the under, under some localization. But it's not only possible way to construct a, pot, a bounded potential. Well, what's the impact on the nonlinear dynamics if you, if you study KDV for such potentials? You have seen movie. Okay. It will be propagation, it will be formation of solid ionic gas. It's electronic turbulence. <clears throat> uh, and if, well, what, so, so far, so far, so far we cannot generate, we cannot, so, so far our, our technique <laughs> makes possible only, only to construct a potential which is a finite number finite number of cuts. Uh, theoretically speaking, if you make them, these cuts, uh, if we look, if we look our movie again, uh, initial movie. First, which is before, before that, previous one. Well, this, in this case, in this case, your spectrum is one fold. And this is formation of dispersive shock waves. And now second. In the second movie, we, in the second movie, we started from mm, a regular, a regular, a regular uh, potential, but two-folded with, with uh, spectrum is double degenerated, and you see formation of pretty random picture as uh, under action of cartesian de Vries equation. We can start. We made this experiment from. Initially, from initially, random, random potentials, random potentials which 
uh, our dressing function was kind of a polynomial of tense order uh, exponent and polynomials of tense order with uh, uh, random roots. And we have behavior such as this, like that. but it was ideal conductor anyway. And one of the inter physical problems is it is plus, it, it, there are some arguments that DNA is actually a conductor, but it's certainly not uh, regular. <laughs> there is no Anderson localization in DNA. All right, I finished. Okay, and you may be more. Quick question or less? Yeah. Okay, let's thank. So, thank you.